This video is a practice question on kinematics and aerodynamic resistance. While I read out the question, I will underline the important points raised. A new sports car has a drag coefficient of 0 0.29 and a frontal area of 1.85 meters squared and is traveling at 160 kilometers per hour. How much power is required to overcome aerodynamic resistance if rho is equal to 1.23 kilograms per meters cubed? The information that I underlined is now displayed in bold. Through this process, I have isolated the information in the question that is relevant to solving the problem. Here we have a car traveling along a road we can model this car as an object in motion. This is its direction of motion. Certain physical properties of the car and the air have been provided to us. Aerodynamic resistance is the force exerted on the car by the surrounding air resisting its motion. We want to know how much power the car must generate in order to overcome aerodynamic resistance and begin its motion. The solution approach will be to first determine the aerodynamic resistance and then use that value to calculate the power required to overcome aerodynamic resistance. How do we calculate aerodynamic resistance? We can utilize the equation for aerodynamic resistance derived in the lecture slides. Let's take a closer look at the information provided. We can extract the parameters required for the RA equation. RA is equal to 0 0.5 rho CD AF V squared. CD represents the drag coefficient. It is a function of vehicle type and operational factors. Its units are dimensionless. AF represents the projected frontal area of the car. It is a function of the vehicle size and its units are in meters squared. V represents the velocity of the car. We are told that the car is traveling at 160 kilometers per hour. This is the speed of the car. We have assumed that the car's direction of motion is towards the right hand side or in the X direction. And thus we can say that the velocity of the car is 160 kilometers per hour in the X direction. Remember, velocity is a vector quantity. It is speed with direction. Its units are kilometers per hour. Ideally, the velocity term in the RA equation should be the difference between the velocity of the vehicle and the velocity of the wind. In most situations, and in this solution, will hold the velocity of the wind to be negligible. Therefore, the velocity equals the velocity of the vehicle. Rho represents density. It is the density of the surrounding air. It is also the lowercase Greek letter for R. The units of rho are kilograms per meters cubed. Rho is a function of the altitude and temperature. C, D, A, F, and V are physical properties of the car, while rho is a physical property of the air. All four of these parameters are required to calculate R, A. Before we go ahead and calculate R, A, let's derive an equation for power that is in terms of our known values. Here we have some common physical relationships. 
Power is equal to work over time. However, we don't have a value for work right now and we don't have a value for time. Let's try to replace these two terms. Let's start with work. We know that work is equal to force times displacement. So let's go and sub this in. Power is equal to force times displacement. over time. This is good because we know that Ra is a force. However, we don't have a value for displacement and we don't have a value for time. If we search around, we also know that velocity is equal to displacement over time. So we can take this velocity term and substitute it into our power equation. Power is now equal to force times velocity. We've just taken this part in the equation in red and replaced it with velocity. We now have power in terms of force and velocity. We have the value for force, Ra, and we have a value for velocity. Let's now do a quick dimensional check. Power is in terms of watts. We know that the right hand side of our first power equation is in joules per second. Joules can be expressed in terms of kilograms, meters squared over second squared. Therefore, the right-hand side of our first power equation can be expressed as joules over seconds or kilograms meters squared second squared times 1 over s, which gives us kilograms meters squared seconds cubed. Now let's look at our second power equation. This is in terms of newtons over meters per second. Newtons can be expressed as kilograms meters over second squared. So to write out the units of the second power equation, we've got kilograms meters second squared times meters per second, which gives us kilograms meters squared, second cubed. Both one and two are equal. Therefore, the dimensions are equal on either side of the equation of our new power equation. We're good to go. Now let's go ahead and compute the RA equation. The first step is to check that all of our parameters are in SI units. I see that velocity is in terms of kilometers per hour. However, it should be in terms of meters per second. So let's go do the conversion now. Velocity is equal to 160 kilometers per hour. Let's eliminate the kilometers term first putting one kilometer in the bottom. One kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Now for the hours term, one hour in the top is equal to 60 minutes and every minute contains 60 seconds. As you can see, the kilometers term gets canceled out. And the hours term gets canceled out, leaving us with meters per second. The full equation is now 160 times 1,000 meters over 3,600 seconds. Computing this, we get 44.44 meters per second. Now we can plug all these values into our RA equation. RA is equal to 
0 0.5, 0 0.29, 1.85 and 44.44 squared. Putting this into my calculator, I get 649.10 RA is a force, so it will be in newtons. There we go. Now recalling our derived equation for power in terms of RA and velocity, its power is equal to RA times velocity. This is the power required to overcome aerodynamic resistance. RA we just calculated to be 649.10 newtons and velocity was 44.44 meters per second. Make sure you use the one in SI units. Substituting these two into the power equation, we get power to overcome Ra is 649.1 times 44.44. Putting this into my calculator, I get a large number, 28848.83, and power is in terms of watts. I can simplify this by dividing it by 1000 to get 28.85 kilowatts, 1 kilowatt is equal to 1000 watts. Now I've also got an answer here in terms of horsepowers. I know that one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. So let's go do the conversion now. I start off with PRA is equal to 28848.83 watts. I know that the conversion between horsepower and watts is one horsepower over 760, sorry, 46 watts. Computing this, I get 38.89 horsepower, where the watts are cancelled out and we're left with horsepower. Now I've got our power to overcome aerodynamic resistance in terms of horsepower and in terms of watts. It's interesting to note that the term for horsepower is the work done by a horse over a unit of time. It was one of the earliest measurements of power. So there you go, we've solved this equation. Thanks for watching this video and good luck.